And the reason why we record is because this is an international ministry. We're reaching out to people in many nations. Many nations are uh, come on board. Some cannot come on at the same time we're live. For example, in Kenya, our friends there in Kenya um, uh, let me know that right now it's 10.10 mm, it's 10 a.m. here on the East Coast in the United States. So it's about 8 p.m. 8 p.m. in Kenya. And in a lot of places, the lights go out. The lights go out. So they're not... <clears throat> online live with us and then uh, one of our friends is in the nation of Burundi and uh, they have very little internet access and so and uh, so what some of them do they make the trip ladies and gentlemen to the the uh, internet store the next day and and go online and watch these messages and uh, some uh, who do have internet We'll, we'll down, download the messages later on and get their messages on their iPhones, their cell phones, or on their computers, and they get the word. So that's just in Kenya alone. Uh, we're reaching out. We're getting people from us. Uh, Switzerland. We're getting people from uh, uh, um, the Scandinavian countries, Europe, getting people from the Caribbean, and, and, and they are listening and they look forward to getting messages from the Back to Basics online church. And so we count it a joy. It's a privilege. Yes, it's an honor, too, to be able to serve the Lord in this manner. And we want to walk humbly before God. God says, do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before him. So we commit this entire service and this entire ministry unto the Lord. Let's just take a little bit of time out right where you are, ladies and gentlemen, right where you are. Uh, just as that graphic uh, is on the, the screen, you'll see me in the service a couple weeks ago in Wilmington, Delaware, lifting my hands unto the Lord. So let's just lift up our hands to the Lord right where you are and just worship him. Just tell him you love him in your own way. This the, uh, we, you don't have to unmute your phone to do this. But just lift your hands. Lord God, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. There is none like you, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for this new day. We worship you. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Now, God, we ask that you bless today. And we praise you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that we can lift our hands to you. Thank you that we can lift our voices unto you. We praise you. We come in the name of Jesus to offer praise and worship to you on the online church. And we give thanks to you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to get ready to uh, prepare ourselves to hear uh, from the scripture. But before the scripture, I see my friend, uh, my young friend, Nathan. Rainville is on, on board with us, and we're going to ask Nathan if he would lead us in prayer. Pray for the ministry, Nathan. Pray for the people, and, and, and pray for this nation. Pray for the world. In your own way, Nathan, would you pray for, for us? Can you hear me? Yes, hear you very well, Nathan. God bless you. Uh. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. We want to thank you for all the blessings and all the food and drinks. Lord, please watch over us and please help us with help Leroy with this online meeting. And Jesus, holy, and forgive us for our sins, known and unknown. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. He's a good guy, ladies and gentlemen. He's our friend. He's, he's blessed and a powerful young man in the Lord. Praise God. I told his mama on the phone this past week, I said, you know, Jackie and I, we might just want to adopt Nathan as our grandson uh, or great-grandson. Uh, we might want to adopt Nathan as our grandson and, uh, and, and just encourage him as he uh, continues his journey with the Lord. And so we bless you. We thank Nathan uh, for 
uh, who he is. We thank God for uh, bringing him into the kingdom for a time like this. And we thank God for his parents and his brother and sister and the entire family. We love the whole family. Praise God. Well, we're recording and um, we're, we're, uh, we greet our recorded re- listeners who are li- listening to the recording. We greet all the ones in the Caribbean, all my friends in Jamaica. We'll see you in October. We'll see you in October. Uh, we're looking to- forward to our graduates uh, that we'll uh, meet in October in, in Jamaica. And then we just thank God for what he's doing. He's expanding the school of ministry. I mean, so many people are reaching out for this online Bible study that begins September 4th. You might want to put uh, a note on your calendar. September 4th, we're going to start. We're going to teach the Bible. We're going to go through what the Bible says, not what Leroy Carter thinks, not what uh, so-and-so thinks, but not what so-and-so wrote in his book or her book, but we're going to look at what God wrote in his book. We're going to take the Bible. We're going to go, ladies and gentlemen, from Genesis to Revelation. I want you to lock in your heart that you will follow this Bible teaching, and, and our, our design is to teach the Bible over the next 18 months, 18 months, a year and a half. And in a year and a half, we're going to take our time, go through the Bible. We're going to spend the first two weeks uh, in the book of, the first four weeks in the book of Genesis, then two weeks in Exodus, then a week in Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then we're going to do uh, 12 week segments of the, the, uh, the Bible. We want to look at the, uh, the first segment will be, <clears throat> and that will also be a three, three credit course for those who want to study for credit. The first 12 weeks will be looking at the, the books of the law. Then the next 12 weeks will be looking at the books of Old Testament history. Then the next 12 weeks, the books of uh, Old Testament poetry. We're looking at Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Then the next 12 weeks will be the, the major prophets uh, uh, who are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. Then the next 12 weeks will be the minor prophets. Then we're going to spend 12 weeks. Yes, we have a 12-week segment on the intertestamental period. We're going to report on those things that took place between the time of Malachi and the time of John the Baptist appearing in the book of Matthew. Then we're going to look at the life of Jesus for 12 weeks. Then 12 weeks in the book of Acts. Then 12 weeks with the Pauline epistles, then 12 weeks with the general epistles, and then 12 weeks with the book of Revelation. We have designed 11 12-week segments for studying the Bible. And you can study the Bible with us for free. Uh, You can study the Bible with us to earn a certificate if you want a certificate. Or you can study the Bible with us so that you can earn credit in the school of ministry. Anyone starting with us for 12 weeks just in the Bible track alone can earn, can pick up the associate's degree, the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, and the doctor's degree in 18 months' time. So visit my website for more information or give me a call, and uh, we will, we will um, give you that information. Okay, so praise God. Okay, before we ask uh, Jackie Fisher to come on and and share uh, the scripture with us, let's pray for Ryan's brother, Ryan's brother Rodney. Let's pray for Ryan's brother Rodney, who suffered a massive stroke, has a blood clot on his brain. Let's pray for him right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are the healer. You are known as Jehovah Rapha the God who heals. And Lord, we present to you Rodney, Ryan Trogler's brother. Lord, you love Rodney. You made him. Lord, we ask that you touch him in his body. Heal him, God. He suffered a stroke and has a blood clot in his brain. Lord, you are the healer. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you heal him and, and, and set him free and deliver him from this affliction and infirmity. And we thank you, Father, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. While we're praying, there there are also others. Uh, we're going to pray at the end of the service for others, but we want to lift up so many have suffered uh, a loss of loved ones in these last couple of weeks. Uh, uh, as I look up over, I, I see several of my friends have passed away. Uh, one is a pastor here in Atlanta, Pastor Michael Harris. So we're praying for Sylvia and their family. Michael served as pastor for about 34 years at Wheat Street Baptist Church in Atlanta. And many others are suffering. Uh, praying for uh, Dr. Candace Staten, who lost her mother. Her mother, Pat, passed away two days ago. One of my classmates uh, from seminary, Jerome Burton, uh, Pastor Jerome Burton passed away in Kentucky uh, over the last past week, and uh, so on and so on. One of my friends from college, Len Henderson, passed away. And so many have passed and have, have transitioned, ladies and gentlemen. And so we, we, we pray for the bereaved families, and you many of you have bereavement in your lives concerning loved ones. So we're going to pray uh, at the end of the service lift up those who are hurting and um then we're looking at all over the world for those of you who are listening to the recording all over the world there are atrocities and 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 mutilations and christians being mutilated a uh, lady in india had her throat slit uh there are all kinds of evil going on and so we've got to bind the enemy by the authority of the name of jesus but through it all through it all my friends Jesus is Lord. I cannot get a witness. Can I get a witness in the chat window that Jesus Christ is Lord? Amen, Ryan. Amen, Terry. Amen, everybody. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, so we're going to ask Jackie Fisher to come on at this time, and we want you to download, download, um, your in your Bible Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through 35 after Jackie Fisher reads the scripture we're going to hear a couple songs by uh, one of our newest friends Kevin Wilson and the Kevin Wilson band whom we met in Indiana and Kevin has given me his personal permission to play his songs on this ministry. So I say to YouTube and Facebook and everybody else, Kevin has given us permission, and we have the written agreement. Okay, so we um, will be hearing uh, a couple songs from Kevin Wilson after Jackie reads the scripture, and then we hear the message. The message is entitled, What Happens If I Don't Forgive? Jackie Fisher. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter and everyone. Uh, today I'll be reading Sin and Forgiveness out of Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then came Peter to, to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Parable of the unforgiving servant. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. 
and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that, that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. That's Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie Fisher, for reading the scripture. Uh, Jackie Fisher, she's a blessing. She's a blessing, ladies and gentlemen. And I love the way she reads the word. What a treasure a God has placed on this earth in Jackie Fisher. And we thank God. Okay, we're going to, I'm putting up the graphic now. We're going to hear two songs from Kevin Wilson and the Kevin Wilson band. And uh, Jeep, Jeep just said, put in the chat window, she woke up uh, singing one of Kevin Wilson's songs. And so this is Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, and a uh, great minister of music who has uh, recorded several CDs, and he's given us permission to play his songs. So let's hear two songs. Number one, Born Again. Then we're going to hear um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Let's start with Born Again, Kevin Wilson. That was not Kevin Wilson. <laughs> Let's get Kevin Wilson on here. I'm born again. I'm born again. 
of that interstate Face in his hands Head on the wheel and I pulled up and asked him What was going on I said, buddy, I know just how you feel Cause I've been there wasn't that long ago If I learned anything If you gotta get that on the road Don't sweat the small stuff What time it will be love Everything has a way of working out It won't take too long If you just hold on Get tough. And don't sweat the small stuff. A few days later, feeling sorry for myself. Thoughts of giving up will run through my head. This old man that I know walks up to me Puts his arm around me and he says Son, I think that Wasn't that long ago If I'd learned anything If you gotta get back on the road Don't slip the small stuff Time and a little love. Everything has a way of working out. It won't take too long. If you just hold on, be strong. When time gets up, don't switch off. Just keep the faith and trust your fellow man. Don't sweat the small stuff, but time and a little love. Everything has a way of working out. It won't take too long if you just hold on. Praise God, praise God. There you have him. Kevin Wilson, Kevin Wilson, and Dustina, I'm going to send you his contact information and his phone number early next week. If you don't hear from me by Tuesday, give me a, a shout out, okay? Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Praise God. Praise God for Kevin Wilson. Okay. All right. We're getting ready for our message now. And let's look again at that word, the word of God. Jackie Fisher read it so well for us. We're looking at Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. Simon Peter came to Jesus and said, Hey, Lord Jesus, uh, um, how often should we forgive somebody? Seven times? And Jesus said, No, 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 no. Forgive them 70 times seven. So Jesus knows we're not going to count the times we forgive somebody, and we should not. According to his instructions, we are not to count the times we forgive someone or the times they have offended us. I know there are so many people, and they say, well, that's the last straw. Like John Wayne said in the movie The Searchers, that tears it. That tears it, pilgrim. No, 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 there is no limit on how often we're to forgive someone. 
if they continue to sin against us and, and offend us, we have to forgive them. Why? Why, Pastor Carter? Because the Lord says so in his word. There are many people today, ladies and gentlemen, who are suffering illness, suffering sickness, suffering setbacks, and, and hell is full of people today who would not forgive. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to church every day of the week. You can go to church three times on Sunday. And if you have anything, ought against anybody in your heart, God is not going to let you into heaven. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I beg to differ. Well, keep on begging. Differ all you want. But look at the scripture. You can differ with me all you want, but I'm not going to fall for the okie doke. I'm not even going to contend with you or argue with you. The, the, the proof is in the pudding, and the pudding is the word of God. Let's look at what Jesus says. And that's the direction we're going on in our Bible study start, starting September 4th. We're going to look at what God says, what the Holy Ghost says, what Jesus says. The Bible says all Scripture is given for, 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 uh, all Scripture is given for our profit, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. And so the Scripture is where the action is, ladies and gentlemen. Simon Peter said, how often should I forgive somebody? Seven times? Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. In other words, you keep on forgiving them. Uh, when you get up to 490, you keep on forgiving. And then he gave a parable. Jesus gave a parable, ladies and gentlemen. He said, the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus came to usher in the kingdom of heaven. His kingdom is different from any other kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to find all this lying Republican and Democratic rhetoric in the kingdom of heaven. You can choose your side politically in this nation, but ladies and gentlemen, I choose to uh, follow Jesus and what he has to say. I'm not going to get caught up in this finger pointing and this nasty rhetoric that is plaguing this nation and, and flowing over to the nations of the world. People follow kings, they follow presidents, they follow prime ministers, they follow mayors, they follow pastors. And, and ladies and gentlemen, if the person is not promoting Jesus Christ and the word of God, they're off base. And so I choose to follow Jesus and, 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 and be a real serious member of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a king. And he uh, wanted to give an account of his servants. So he called his servants together, and he had assessed them. He had checked their reports, their records, and, and he kept a profile on his servants, and, and he wanted to know how they were doing. And so uh, there was one servant who owed him 10,000 talents. Now imagine that's $10,000, but it isn't. It's not the equivalent of $10,000, but we're going to imagine that the, the man owed his boss or his master $10,000. Now, this man could have been an indentured servant. He could have been a hired servant, but he owed the man 10000 bucks. And, and, and the master demanded his money. Hey, man, pay me up. It's time that you paid me. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I, we know what it's like to get behind in our bills. Come on, somebody. We get behind in our bills, and we get all these nasty phone calls and these threatening letters, and, 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 and they're just so nasty. They invade your Facebook page. They invade your, your website and all this with their nasty rhetoric. Pay your bills. Pay up. You owe me this. You owe me that. And they call you at the wrong time of the day. See, they calculate when they're going to call you to try to upset you, to try to get you to go off the deep end. And they're, they're trying to get their money. And um, I even had a man threaten me about 20 years ago. If you don't give me the money you owe our company, I'm coming over to your house. <laughs> he made a big mistake. Hey, Ryan, he made a big mistake. Because back in that day, I said, come on. Come on, come on, bring it on. <laughs> but he never showed up. I'm so glad I did. God blessed me to pay that company off. And so glad I don't get those nasty, threatening uh, 
phone calls anymore. So glad that God blessed me this year. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost blessed me this year to get debt free, to pay off all my credit cards. Don't owe anybody anything but to love them. Praise God. I give God the praise for that. Okay, anyway, this man owed his master $10,000. And the master said, I want my money. I've been waiting long enough. I want my money. And so uh, the, the master threatened to put the man and his wife and his children in prison or to sell them. He threatened to sell them for money, to sell them into slavery for money. But the servant fell on his knees. He fell down and began worshiping his master. Now, you're not to fall down and worship anybody but Jesus. But there are people, I mean, they're kissing up to the president. They're kissing up to the senator. They're kissing up to the pastor. I mean, there are people, they will kiss up to anybody who can bless them with what they need. But ladies and gentlemen, we do not fall down. We do not bow down, Jackie Fisher, to anybody. We do not bow down to idols. We do not bow down to statues. We do not bow down to kings and queens. We don't bow down to our husband or our, or our wife. We don't bow down to our kids. We bow down to Jesus because Jesus is Lord. We're talking about the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Anyway, this man bowed down and worshiped his master and begged him, have patience on me, he said. Have patience on me. I'll pay you everything I owe you. Then the master, the Lord of that servant, was moved. He was touched by the begging. There are a lot of you, you're touched by beggars. Beggars have a way of, beggars have a way of looking you in the eye and getting every dollar in your pocketbook. And, and so the master forgave the man of his debt, the $10,000, whatever that amount was. He forgave him of that debt and, and told him to go on. He loosed him. He loosed him from that debt, according to Matthew 18 and 27. But, but that very same servant, ladies and gentlemen, had somebody who owed him 100 bucks. Somebody owed him 100 bucks. Now, his master just forgave him of a $10,000 debt. And so this same servant went to the guy who owed him 100 bucks and said, Hey, man, I want my money. Give me my money. Give me my money. It's time you paid me my $100. And the guy who owed him $100 didn't have the money. And so this servant, who had just been forgiven his debt, grabbed the guy by his throat. Grabbed the guy by his throat and choked him and said, I want my money, I want my money. He tried, started choking the guy for the money and saying, pay me what you owe me. And his fellow servants fell down on his feet just like this man had fallen down before his master. He worshiped his master. He begged his master to forgive him of $10,000, and the master forgave him. And now this guy has a servant who owes him $100, he fell down on his feet and on his knees and begged, begged the master, uh, forgive me. I, I don't have the money. Forgive me of my debt. And this guy would not forgive the man who owed him $100, but he went and cast him into prison. Page uh, 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 19, uh, we're looking at verse 30, and he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. He had no mercy on the man. Now, I've always been troubled, uh, uh, not troubled, but kind of uh, humbled by this scripture. He said he cast him into prison until he should pay his debt. I mean, I wonder, how can you pay your debt if you're cast into prison? But they must have had some system where X number of days or X number of years equaled X number of dollars owed. I know they had a system. And so when this servant's fellow servants heard what he had done uh, uh, in humiliating his own servant who owed him a debt. These servants went to the master who had forgiven this man originally and told him what was done. And so the master went back to the man and, humili hum and humiliated him and chastised him and said, Oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because you begged me. The scripture says, you desirest me, you beg me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, 
even as I had pity on thee. I mean, the master uh, chastised him. I forgave you of your $10,000 debt. Shouldn't you have had mercy on the guy who owes you $100? And no, you threw him into prison. Verse 34, and his Lord was wroth. Wroth means he was angry. And delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. And in other words, he delivered him to the tormentor. And when he delivered that man to the tormentor, that meant he was tormented for a period of time until uh, uh, the tormentors determined that he had paid the debt that he owed the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, these parables of Jesus have great significance, great significance. Uh, parables are shadows of things to come. And so verse 5 uh, Jesus says, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. I'm going to read this again, ladies and gentlemen, because this is Jesus speaking. This is not Leroy speaking. This is not uh, TD. This is not JL. This is not AR. This is uh, Jesus speaking. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. My subject is entitled today, What Happens If I Don't Forgive? What Happens If I Don't Forgive? And Holy Spirit, we praise you for this opportunity to preach this message. Take the lead, Holy Spirit, and convict people all over the world. Convict us, God. Help us to forgive everyone, whether they are living or dead. Let us forgive everyone who owes us, and then forgive us of our trespasses. For you said in your word, Lord God, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and so, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this man... Uh, who did not forgive the, the one who owed him something, threw the man in prison, and then he was chastised for doing what he did because he had been forgiven a great debt, but he would not forgive someone who owed him a hundred measly bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens if I don't forgive? The Lord is, is, is reaching out. In the last couple of weeks, I've heard more sermons on forgiveness or unforgiveness than any other topic. I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to his people. I believe God is trying to speak to us, ladies and gentlemen, that we ought to forgive, that we ought not to have bitterness towards anybody, living or dead. The scripture says, uh, lest there be found in you any root of unforgiveness, any root of bitterness, that many should be defiled. We must forgive. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I, every one of us has been hurt by somebody. We've been burned by people. I've just been burnt recently. I've just been burnt, and it was a terrible burn, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? God said, be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. Harbor, don't harbor any bitterness in your heart. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? When you obey God, when we obey God, if we forgive those who offend us, I mean, forgive them right away. Don't give that thing any chance to fester. Don't give that thing a chance to grow in us. But forgive right away and watch what the Lord will do. When you forgive somebody, you set them free. Not only do you set them free, but you set yourself free. Let me tell you something. As I mentioned last week, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, Dustina, is like drinking a a glass of poison and watching for the other person to die. Ain't that dumb? Ain't, hey, Jackie Fisher, that's dumb. That's one of the dumbest things you can do, to drink a glass of poison and watch the person you hate die. The, that person ain't going to die. The poison is going to kill you. Unforgiveness is just like that, drinking a glass of poison and waiting for the other person to die. The Bible says we ought to forgive. We pray when we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How can you expect God to forgive you 
if you won't forgive anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people who are going to miss heaven because they are too hard-hearted. They will not forgive. They don't forgive. And some of you listening today, and some of you in foreign lands listening uh, to the tape or the recording, you've harbor, you're harboring bitterness in your heart. You've got something against somebody. And you may argue well with me. You may argue till your face turns blue. Well, Pastor Carter, you don't know what they did to me. No, I don't know what they did to you, honey. And I don't know what they did to you, brother. And I really, frankly, I don't care. All I know is what the Word of God said. Frankly, I don't care. All I know is what the Word of God says, that we ought to forgive those who forgive, who have offended us. Forgive those who have trespassed against us. We do not pick and choose whom we forgive. We forgive everybody and anybody. Whether they are living or dead, we must forgive them. Ladies and gentlemen, there's some of you, you're going through life, and, and you're getting up there in age, and you're still harboring bitterness towards your mother and your father, or towards someone in your background, or towards someone who abused you when you were a child, or to your husband, or to your wife. Uh, you're uh, harboring bitterness against your boss, or uh, the person who fired you, or the person who didn't hire you for a job. You didn't get a promotion, and you're still bitter. You're jealous of your brother and sister because uh, your sister's hair was longer than yours. I mean, we have all kinds of dumb stuff that we hold against people, but the Bible teaches us. And Jesus gives us this great parable in Matthew 18 and tells us that we are to forgive. And how do we expect God to forgive us if we don't forgive? Ladies and gentlemen, the fact is this. If you don't forgive, and what happens if I don't forgive? If you don't forgive or if I don't forgive, God is not going to forgive us our sins. I beg to differ with you, Pastor Carter. Hey, like I said earlier, you can beg all night long. You can beg till you turn blue. You can differ, but the, the battle's not mine. It's the Lord's. You argue with God who wrote the scripture. You ask God to change his scripture. God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. When God says forgive those who have trespassed against you, then forgive them. And when you forgive them, God will forgive you. There are a lot of people today, right now, some of you are listening right now, you've got sickness in your body. A lot of people have bitterness in their spirit, in their body. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that bitterness, if you let that bitterness, that anger, that jealousy, that rage, that resentment, that envy, if you let it continue to fester, you let the weeks turn into months and the months turn into years and the years into decades, soon before long you hear the doctor say, you've got cancer. Many cancers are the result of bitterness and unforgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, you can live healthy if you forgive. You can live a healthier lifestyle if you forgive. Ladies and gentlemen, when you forgive, you release someone from captivity. You set that person up to be saved, and you also release your body of, of pain. You can even release your body of, of disease and sickness. So be quick to forgive. Then we're talking about peace of mind. You can have peace of mind. You can have sweet sleep. You can have sweet sleep. The Bible says God gives his servants sweet sleep. You don't have to take something, some chamomile or something else to go to sleep. You don't have to run a mile before you sleep. You can have sweet sleep. How? By forgiving those who have offended you in any way. And, and well, Pastor Carter, as I said before, you don't know what they did to me. No, I don't know what they did to you. And I really, frankly, I don't care. All I know is, and you don't know what they did to me. And you shouldn't care. All I know is this. God said in his word, forgive those who have offended you. Forgive them. God is not going to forgive you or me if we do not forgive others. So, uh, receive this word. Receive this word from the Lord. Receive it today. Ladies and gentlemen, when we forgive, we release people who have kept us in prison. When we release them, you'll have peace of mind. You'll have sweet sleep. 
Your body can heal. You can he receive the healing from the Lord. Many people do not receive their healing because of unforgiveness. And God says in his word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. God has sent the healing. He's released the healing. But you can't receive it because you've got something you're harboring against your brother. And that's festering like a cancer. And, and it's fighting against, it's fighting against uh, the healing of God. It's like the white corpuscles fighting against the, the red corpuscles. But when you repent and ask God to forgive you and you forgive that person who has hurt you, no matter what they have done, you watch how those red corpuscles divide and, 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 and multiply. And your blood, even your blood will clear up. Your blood will clear up. Your mind will clear up. Your, your very being will be at peace. And you walk in harmony with the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is here, ladies and gentlemen. The kingdom of heaven is here in the kingdom of heaven. We sleep a good sleep. In the kingdom of heaven, we have peace. In the kingdom of heaven, the Lord supplies all our needs. In the kingdom of heaven, God is Jehovah Rapha. Not only will he heal the body, but he will heal the mind, the soul, and the spirit. So be quick to forgive. Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to you, giving glory and honor to you. Thank you for this message, Lord. Thank you for the blessing of this message. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, help everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening live or listening by way of the recording, help them to forgive anyone and everyone who has ever hurt them in any way, no matter what that person did to them. Help them to forgive. Bring healing, God. Bring healing in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Hey, we're going to listen to another song by Kevin Wilson. And this song is entitled, A Place to Forgive Me. A Place to Forgive Me. Listen to Kevin Wilson as he sings this song, A Place to Forgive Me.
Praise God, praise God, praise God. That's Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin Wilson, a place to forgive me. Isn't that wonderful? Kevin Wilson, a place to forgive me. You can order uh, Kevin Wilson's CDs, praise God, uh, 